In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to show you how you can use the Photo Composer to layer foreground and background images. If you use this method, you don't need to learn the intricacies of working with layers, but there are some limitations. We're going to show you a brief example of a photo that we've done this to, and then we'll show you the process. I'm in the library panel, and so I'm going to go to the guided area to get to this tool. It tells me it'll make a copy. I'll say I'm fine with that. Click on OK. Then I need to move into the Extract Compose subcategory, and the first option there is called Photo Composer. I'll click on that. And now it wants to add images. Now I already have an image on the screen. That's the one I want to use for my background. I'm going to click on the plus sign, and I have two options. I can go anywhere in my file folder system, or I can go to my background removal gallery. Now, if you've already used the background removal tool to cut out a background and leave something in the foreground, it will automatically make a copy of it and place it in this gallery. I've done that, so I want to show you how to use that if you've done that so far. I'll click here. And here are several different items that I have already removed the background from. These are copies, but they work just like the originals. I'm going to click on the test one, click on OK. We'll bring it in. I'm going to drag and drop it so that we have this area here on our photograph. So I've layered it on top of the background. Let's add another image. I'll click here, and I'm going to take another one I've done before, this gentleman and click on him. It will add him. And so what I'm going to do now is change the size, make it look like he's right out here in the open. So we have actually three layers going on, the original, the gentleman, and the other one. We're going to add a couple more to make it interesting to look like the example you saw a moment ago. I'll click on Add Images again. This time I'm going to do From Folder. It takes me to this folder. I'm going to put a baseball cap on the gentleman. I'll click on this and we'll resize it and try to fit it on his head, at least after a fashion. And you notice you also have, for any image that you layer here, you have all these controls. You can change the tint, the temperature, the exposure, the contrast, the opacity, you can flip it left to right if you want to. These are some of the controls that you have that you can modify. Let's give them a purple one in this case. And then we can position it and size it any way we like. We can rotate it using the green rotation button. So now I've given them a hat and I'm going to go back to the Add Images and go to From Folder. I'll take this little tiny icon, I'll shrink it down and we'll position it on his collar. So now I actually have a background image and I've placed four other images on top of it and I don't have to know anything about officially using layers. Now let me show you the shortcomings of this. If you use this, and I'm going to click on another layer, that comes to the front and it makes it very hard for me to see what else did I have here. If I click on the man, that he comes to the front, but now I've lost the hat. I need to click on that to bring that to the front, but my icon's missing. So if I really want to rebuild this from scratch, what I need to do is take all of the elements and put them where I don't want them and assemble them on the screen. I can drag the man here. I can take the background and click on him to put him in front and then layer the cap and then take the small icon and put it back where it was before. So you can make those adjustments if you want. But that's one of the limitations. The more you layer, the more complicated it gets, the more awkward this particular tool will happen to be. When you're done, you can click on Save As in the lower left corner, and it will want a name for the file. I'll just call this Test and click on Save. And now it will save it, and it will also bring it into this particular project. And so now I have the file here. Do I want to change my temporary virtual copy for editing? I'll say no. So now I have it here. I can't edit it in this format, but I have the original 
plain background and then I have the modification here. I feel like this is an okay tool to use if you're really in a hurry, just want to do something really simple with foreground and background. But if you want to be complicated, you need to move into the edit world with the edit tab and learn a little bit about layers. We'll have tutorials on how to do that. But this is kind of the quick shortcut if you don't want to go that far in your learning or you need to throw something together in a big hurry.